Hi, my name is Andrew Moody, and I'm here talking with the one, the only, actor, director, artistic director, bon vivant, <laughs> wit about town. <laughs> Phil, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Phil Aiken. I, I, I would have worn a, um, not jeans if I was going to be a wit around town. <laughs> <laughs> a bon vivant. A bon vivant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Phil... Bringing my glasses on the read. Okay, so uh, it says you were born in uh, in Jamaica. I was mm -hmm. Kingston, Jamaica, 1950. Wow. Okay. So, and but how long did you spend there in Jamaica? Um, I lived there for four years. Uh, my parents came up in '53. Mm -hmm. I came up in '54 with my brother Layton, mm -hmm. and uh, I still actually have a really clear memory of getting off that Air Canada plane at Pearson. Really? What yeah. was the memory? Uh, walking down the the steps to the tarmac, mm -hmm. and uh, that it it felt cold. Not you know, it wasn't like cold. Mm -hmm. It was just you know, it was just different because up until then I'd been, you know, spent a year living with my grandmother, running around um, stealing mangoes from the farmer next door, and him firing shotguns at us. So it was different, right? <laughs> Never hitting you. Well, he used rock salt to be to be fair. Okay. Because he wanted to hit you and then the salt would take a long time to dissolve in your ass oh, and hurt. Okay. Oh, I didn't So, know you know, it was the 50s. It was a different kind of training method. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, and um, around that time, like Canadian culture at that time, uh, uh, talk to me about it because there was there was an influx of West Indians to Canada around that time. Yeah, there was. I mean, um, well, and that's the reason why um, immigrants have voted Liberal for so many years is because it was the Liberal Party who finally opened the doors to let in uh, immigration come in. So you didn't have to be a nanny or a maid to come up from Jamaica and and uh, be accepted in the country. So, Canadian culture, I mean, we were living in Oshawa, and um, we were the only black family there until I was about 16, 17. So, yeah, you know, there was all the normal things. Uh, <clears throat> if we wanted uh, anything West Indian or to see other black people, you'd have to go into Toronto. Mm. Um, for yeah. food, for, for for any of it, yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, but of course, your mom would be making West Indian food at home. A little bit. I mean, you know, it's there was there was a real sense of trying to fit in. Okay. Right. So yes, you know, you'd have rice and peas, but you know, nobody was making curry goat. Really? <laughs> no. <sighs> you couldn't find it in Oshawa anyway. Right. So oh, you know, right, right. but. You, you, it was a really different time. I mean, you know, the the um, the racism and the way people fit in was was very much different. So we lived in a, a, a this interesting little subdivision on the northern, slightly northern part of Toronto of of Oshawa, called and uh, Sunset Heights, classical name. Mm -hmm. And we lived on Chevrolet Street, mm -hmm. which was pretty classical for a Oshawa. GM town. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy. Um, Mr. Banfield, uh, he owned the whole area, and instead of just throwing up houses on mass and selling them, he built them one at a time and really kind of vetted people to to kind of move in. So, in amongst you know a lot of the racist shit, there were also people who like him who made it possible for my parents to buy a house, mm -hmm. and and was okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they just lived like about six houses down, down the road. So it was really, it was a different time. It was about fitting in. Mm -hmm.